Welcome to part one of Strange and Interesting Freshwater Fish. In this series, I hope to cover a wide variety of fish over the course of multiple episodes. In these videos, we will discuss fish that are rare, unique, have an interesting history, or maybe are just plain weird. I think that the latter might be the best description for this first one. I had to do a double take when I first saw a picture of a pike killifish. Its elongated body looks somewhat normal, but the pointed snout and protruding lower jaw full of needle-sharp teeth is what really makes this fish an oddity. I wouldn't say that its large jaws and sharp teeth are anything too odd in larger predatory fish, but this is a small fish with adults only growing a bit over 5 inches. Their color is a light beige or tan with rows of black spots on the flanks and a large black blotch on the base of the tail. The pike killifish is a live-bearing fish in the same family as mosquito fish and mollies. It is native to lowland streams and marshes near Veracruz, Mexico and throughout Central America, and they have now since been introduced into South Florida in the Everglades region. Their environmental status in their native range is of least concern. They are a piscivorous fish eating fish like mosquito fish and minnows of similar sizes. Like I mentioned earlier, they're not only unusual among small fish, but particularly among the live-bearing fish because of their predatory build. Their jaws and teeth allow them to snap up other small fish and even their own young. In their invasive range in Florida, they can outcompete or eat native killifish and other small native species. The invasive Florida population reportedly originated from fish being released by a terminated medical research program. While aquarium hobbyists note their striking appearance and curious behaviors, they are not popular pets due to their large appetites and tendency to nip fins. Anglers and biologists find them interesting and noteworthy because of their unique characteristics. The Devil's Hole Pupfish is a tiny species confined to a single hot spring pool in a remote Nevada cavern. This fish has the world's smallest range and is perhaps the rarest fish on the planet. The Devil's Hole pupfish is endemic to Devil's Hole, a 40-foot deep limestone cavern in Nevada's Ash Meadows Refugium. Adults average only around 2 centimeters long, so this is a tiny fish. They are a beautiful blue color, a color that's rare in freshwater fish. The entirety of this species inhabits a 3 to 4 meter wide rock shelf that is about 215 square feet total. The water in this pool is extremely hot, around 93 degrees year round, and is low in oxygen. These fish subsist on the thin algal film growing on that shelf. They breed year round as conditions allow, essentially again on that one shelf. This highly extreme habitat has driven unique adaptations and has made them a classic case study in extreme endangerment. Their status, as you probably have imagined, is critically endangered. The population was once down to only 35 individuals, but it is now kept at a few hundred via refuge breeding. For obvious reasons, this fish is environmentally extremely vulnerable. Conditions would only need to change slightly to Devil's Hole and the entire population would be at risk. To avoid an extinction level event, there is a breeding program outside of Devil's Hole that contains a second population of these fish. The Devil's Hole Pupfish has captured public imagination because it survives in conditions that would kill most other fish. The water is extremely hot, there's very little food, there's very little oxygen, and inbreeding is extreme. In 2022, there was a genetic study that found that there was a 58% genome identity among individuals, making it one of the world's most inbred wild animals. The fish was first federally listed as endangered in 1967 and legal action in 1976 guaranteed its water rights. Conservation efforts allow for only biologists, researchers, and authorized personnel to enter into the cavern and observe these fish. Scientifically, the pupfish exemplifies life on the brink. Biologists study its genetics and ecology to understand evolution in isolation. If anyone asked me why I didn't include a range map for these guys, think again, just Google Devil's Hole and you'll have your range map. Not nearly as petite and perhaps a bit less glamorous, I'd like to now talk about the burbot. 
Burba are North America's only freshwater member of the cod family. It has an eel-like elongated body with a single chin barbel. These fish have long fused dorsal and anal fins, and they can grow to be about 45 inches in length. Burbot are broadly circumpolar. In North America, they range through Canada and Alaska and south into the northern U.S. states. They prefer cold, well-oxygenated waters at about 39 to 64 degrees. They are usually brown or olive in color and have a beautiful mottled patterning across their sides and top with a white belly. They are often caught by anglers through the ice after dark. Burbot feed on fish and invertebrates. They are largely considered an excellent tasting fish, often being referred to as poor man's lobster. Conservation wise, burbot are generally abundant over their range, though dams and habitat changes have caused local declines. Another reason that I find these fish fascinating is that, unlike most fish, they spawn midwinter often under the ice, a strategy that's unique to this group. Because they're nocturnal and somewhat elusive, anglers may overlook this fish, but in some regions, burbot are actually prized ice fishing targets. I caught my first few burbot this past winter, and I found the harsh conditions to catch these fish fascinating, as they not only bit best through the ice, but through the ice, after dark, in the coldest parts of winter. I even fished with the exact same method through the ice in the day, with no luck at all, but as soon as the sun dipped below the horizon, it was like a switch flipped on, and the burbot seemed to come out of nowhere. It was fun to get my hands on this fish, and it just feels so weird. It's kind of like a, a snake underwater. She fish, also known as Inkanu, is a giant arctic whitefish. In fact, it is the largest member of all the whitefish species. Shefish are sleek and silvery with a pointed snout and an underslung lower jaw filled with small teeth. Adults can reach over 40 inches in length. Their native range spans arctic draining rivers of Alaska and Canada. They often migrate between estuaries and upriver spawning sites. Adults are top predators eating fish like cisco and smelt. Juveniles will eat plankton and insects. From an angling standpoint, they leap impressively, making them a thrilling catch. Shefish are regarded as an excellent eating fish. Conservation concerns are now low, but dams blocking migrations and overfishing have affected some populations. Overall, its giant size, along with the blend of salmonid ancestry and predatory behavior, makes this a remarkably interesting species. The Lahontan cutthroat trout is famed as the largest of the cutthroat trout species. They can grow to be over 40 inches long and over 40 pounds. The Lahontan is a subspecies of cutthroat trout historically native to the ancient Lake Lahontan Basin, which is modern day northern Nevada, northeastern California, and southeastern Oregon. Today it is primarily found and fished for in Pyramid Lake, Nevada. Historically, Lahontan cutthroat trout were extremely abundant. They were essential to the diets of native Paiutes and early pioneers. However, when settlement increased in the 1800s, the trout population crashed due to overfishing, water diversions, grazing impacts, and non-native salmonids. By the 1940s, the native Pyramid Lake strain had disappeared, and it was thought to be extinct. In the late 70s, a biologist was surveying in the Utah West Desert, out near the Nevada border, and he discovered some trout in a tiny stream. Because of the stream's location in the Bonneville Basin, trout in that area would presumably be Bonneville cutthroat trout. However, these fish were not Bonneville cutthroat trout. Lo and behold, it turned out that it was a remnant strain of the original Lahontan cutthroat. It is thought that these fish were moved long ago from the Pyramid Lake region likely by railroad workers transporting fish to Utah. Shortly after this discovery, collaboration efforts were taken by the conservationists and the native tribes of Pyramid Lake to return and restore the Lahontans back into Pyramid Lake. Over the last few decades, the Lahontan cutthroat trout have since built an impressive population in Pyramid Lake, and they are now only at a threatened status. In fact, it is now possible for anglers to go and target these impressive giants. 
The Lahontan cutthroat trout story, from Lake Lahontan giants to near extinction and ongoing recovery, is a dramatic example of how geology, climate, and humans shape fish history. The Lahontan cutthroat trout is now Nevada's state fish. Hey everybody, it's Nathan. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have a fish that you'd like to have mentioned in a future episode of this series, please comment down below. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, that really helps out my channel and it helps me reach more people like you who might be interested in fish. So thank you so much and I hope to see you on the next one.